Hi guys! In today's video, I am going to explain the concepts of oops to my father. Now, he has retired from his work two years ago and he has no prior experience of coding other than the videos I drag him in. So this is an attempt to show that oops are very important, right? Because we use it in our day-to-day -day lives. It's the foundation of low-level design. It's what is also asked in interviews a lot. These common concepts can actually be understood by a newbie like my father. So I'm going to explain him the concepts, the theoretical concepts in a very simple way. And I hope I succeed. So just stay tuned and watch the video. But before that, I would like to tell you about the sponsor of the video, Cryo.do. Cryo is a project-based learning platform for you to learn new development skills and land top dev jobs. At Cryo, you will learn full stack or backend development by building internship-like projects in a real developer environment. At the end of the program, you will get to walk away with multiple projects in your resume, new dev skills, and a fantastic GitHub profile that should impress literally any recruiter. You also get personalized career assistance to land your dream job in software development. Use the link in the description below to get 10% additional scholarship to their signature programs and unlock free resources. It's a great opportunity to get placement to build up your good GitHub profile. So do check it out. The link is in the comments. And now let's meet my father and let's get started with Oops Concepts. So Papa, in the initial days, how programming used to happen is there is some data and we have to work on some data, right? Okay. So for example, you are an employee in a company. So you have a name, you have an employee ID. Similarly, you have your friends who are also employees. They also have names, they also have employee IDs. Anna? So in the initial days, how coding used to happen is there is a function which will work on an employee, right? But it starts becoming very complex. So these are very uh, simple data types like string, integer, right? Okay. So to solve real world problems, we have concept of object-oriented programming. Okay. 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 So I'm going to explain you in very simple terms the concepts of object-oriented programming. Why do we need them? Okay. 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 And this is how real coding happens, like in real life. How do we really code? Okay. Okay. okay? Got it. So like to solve the problem that I was talking about. So there is an employee, right? So every employee will have certain amount of details, like employee ID, employee name, employee date of birth, Definitely. employee joining date, things like that. Okay? Definitely. So we'll wrap all of it together under one entity. Okay. okay, okay so okay. now we call employee as a class. Okay. So this becomes like one entity together. The entire information of the employee will uh, become a class. Exactly. Now suppose at a later stage, suppose hmm. you want to add something, say some, uh, say blood group of the employee, you can hmm. you can add it to the same class. Exactly. So there are now problems like these that there are so many classes. How do we maintain these classes okay. in long run? Okay. Right. So the concepts of object oriented programming is going to solve all of these problems for us. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to explain you the principles of that. Please. So you brought up a very good point that today we have some basic details. Tomorrow we want to add something. We want to remove something. We want to change how something works. Yes. Like for example, uh, you want to change that how promotions happen. Like in, in a promotion you used to give 5% increase. Now you want to give 10% increase. Right? Yeah. Something changes. Yeah. Something changes. So now if something changes, uh, will you have to like uh, change your entire code because your code is running yes. it's on the cloud right now how many things do you want to change for like one small change okay right now consider like a huge company working on a lot of modules right okay now there are so many how, how often can you make changes to the code like you have to make releases right and you have to maintain the code there are different people how do they understand the same mode so okay. all of these problems get solved because we write maintainable code reusable code okay Right. Okay. Okay. So now, like, since I made an employee class, so now whenever I have to uh, access like employee named Kishore or employee named Kirti, I can just say employee now becomes a data type sort of. It's a user defined data type. Okay. 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 So we have defined this user data type. Okay. Right. It's a, user data type means we have defined. We are user. We are defining yeah, the data. Yeah. Understood. Type, right. Now it's a class. Class is like a template. Right. So it's a template that, okay, all of this information uh, yeah, is yeah. stored. Okay. Now objects. So every class will have an object like Kishore is an object. Kirti is an object. Uh, employee ABC is an object. Okay. Okay. So we create different employees and we deal with them. Okay. 
now when we create classes like this when we create objects like this what also happens is that we are sort of wrapping data together we are encapsulating it together right okay so this is called first this is the first concept encapsulation right, encapsulation okay that you are wrapping up together you are binding some data together and our uh, data for a particular employee will come together right okay. like what related data yeah right and it's not just data it's also these are like data members there are also some functions like some common things that you need to do on this data okay. like uh, giving promotion or uh, uh, you know noting down the attendance or anything like that some maybe common functions maybe increments maybe anything yes yeah. yes so these are again some common functions that need to be done for all the employees okay so there is some data and there is some functions that like you know some operations that need to be done on this data okay so all of that together forms a class got it sure now this actually also handles one more problem see uh, for example uh, in a company there are different departments right like there is sales department there is finance department there is accounting department yeah, like yeah. different departments right so sales department should not know what's happening in finance department finance department should not know what's happening in sales department okay right like okay. yeah yeah right so you have to hide data of one class from uh, the other class right okay. so when you encapsulate the data together you are actually also taking care of this okay this is called abstraction or hiding data like you are just making sure whatever data is required you are giving that the rest of the information that you don't want to give you are hiding that okay data. suppose the rate of increment for finance people is different and for accounts people is different or for right. uh, hr people is different so they should not come to know exactly okay like which class can access the data of which class Okay. Right. The, the, that can are, be predefined. Right. Exactly. Okay. There's also some visibility and all. Let's not get into details of that. But the point is that you can hide whatever you want. You oh. can show whatever you want. Okay. Like if you write the classes in a proper way. Okay. Makes sense till now. Let's take another example. Like I'm taking very common examples that are actually used to explain to students these concepts. Okay. These are very common concepts that are actually asked in interviews from college students. Even now, we use this in day-to-day -day basis. Okay. So I'm explaining you core concepts of real programming that we actually do. Okay. Okay. So, uh, for example, you are driving a car. Okay. Or you are using an LCD player. When you press uh, play or pause in a LCD player, or when you uh, apply brakes to the car, you just know that when I apply brake, the car should stop. stop. Or when I press play, it should happen. Right. You don't know what's happening inside. So that's abstraction. Okay. You are sort of you just have that. Okay, there is a class called car. You just go like apply brakes. So now car class is taking care of how do I want to apply the brakes? That's Kirti, its internal. Uh, at present, mm -hmm. uh, sorry for uh, mm -hmm. disturbing. At present, uh, the brakes which we apply are mechanical brakes mm -hmm. or hydraulic brakes. And I'm talking about software. Ah, uh, but now the cars which are coming mm -hmm. are software driven. Right. Even if you apply brake, uh -huh. it will be only software will like activate the entire system right. and the brakes will be applied. Right, right. So now you don't need to know how the entire thing Definitely. is Definitely. Right? Only the logic. Uh, exactly. Yeah. So imagine there is a code written, car, the apply brakes. So they are hiding it from us that how the internal things are happening. Definitely. Right? Definitely. So this is called abstraction or hiding. You understood this okay. part? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's, one it's first, very clear. Yeah. So first part was encapsulation. Abs second part was? Uh, abstraction. Right. Now, third point that we take care of is inheritance. Uh, let's say there is a class called vehicle. Okay. Now, there are different types of vehicles. There is a car, there is a bike, there is a truck. Okay. Now, all of these have some common properties. But there are also some properties that are specific to car, specific to bike, specific to this. Right. Your vehicle class is your base class. Okay. There are some common properties in that. And now you derive these class from that. Okay. Like car class, bike class, truck class. And you extend the properties. Okay. Okay. So this is called inheritance. There is some base Understood. class. There is some. The word inheritance itself makes it clear. Right. Okay. So now what actually also happens is we are taking care of reusability. Right. So we have same uh, amount of code written in the base class. We are reusing it for car class also, for bike class also, for truck class also. Okay. Now tomorrow. if Can you explain this by some example? Okay. Uh, for example, uh, there is an employee. Uh, okay, no, wait. No, what you are saying, car, bike, and bus, or whatever. Uh -huh. 
So what are the common uh, data which is uh, common for all and how it is inherited? Common data like uh, say there is some RC data or some DL data okay, that is there, okay, right? Okay. So th that is common for every vehicle. But understood, say for understood. car there is some specific. Maybe chassis number, maybe engine number, maybe yeah, some this, things, yeah. Uh, which are uh, relevant for all the classes. Right, depending okay. on the system that we are okay, constructing, okay, right? Okay. Now say tomorrow there is some new type of vehicle that comes up that is not there presently like a tempo that is not there in the present system. All you have to do is derive another class from vehicle. Yeah, yeah. So this also makes it very less, uh, it's very simple, uh, you know. Uh, because the basic data is already there. Yes. And you can inherit it and then further yes. improve upon it. So this is easily maintainable. It's reusable. Right, you you don't have to write all the basic functionalities again. You are reusing the entire code. All okay. you have to do is like write one more vehicle. Understood. Right. Understood. So this is like when we code in real day to day life. Uh, these are the questions that are asked. Like when we have code reviews, na, they take care, they ask us these questions. That tomorrow, if one more thing comes up, or if I have to remove one attribute, if I have to add one attribute, is your code maintainable? Like, is it reusable? Are you inheriting the correct classes? Okay. This is where uh, your low level design comes out. How do you create the classes? How do you put them together? How do you create the objects? How do they talk to each other? Which class can see which class? Okay. All of this comes in low level design. These are the day to day problems that we deal with. Okay. Okay. Good. Makes sense. Okay. Now uh, we have dealt with three properties. Tell the three properties. Encapsulation. Yeah. Then uh, inheritance is the third one. Second one was uh, um, abstraction. Correct. And inheritance. Yeah. Can, can you explain all the three in one one way? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Encapsulation is the entire, say, suppose uh, you give example of the uh, employee name, uh -huh. employee ID number, his date of birth, date of joining, his uh, increment, etc. This comes under encapsulation. The entire data is encapsulated. Correct. Uh -huh. And then was the abstraction. Uh -huh. uh, abstraction is basically... Uh, uh, what example you gave? Just I'm sorry if you can. Uh, uh, think of any system like a, a DVD player or a car or. Anything. Oh yes, now I remember. Uh -huh. You gave an example of the car brakes uh -huh. because we do not know what logic is taking place behind the. We only know that we have to apply the brakes, but we do not know what is happening. What logic is uh, so that is called abstraction. Exactly. And you then you gave an example of inheritance where you said there are number of uh, various classes maybe car, maybe bike and a tempo is added to it. There are some common features like engine number, chassis number or by there may be some different data. So which data is common to all the classes that can be inherited and balance can be written. So it okay. is uh, what you said is re reusable. Exactly. So now we have understood what are classes, what are objects and now we have also understood three core principles of groups. Uh, yes. The last one is polymorphism. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Polymorphism. It Poly just sounds very fancy. Polymorphism. Hmm. So poly means many. Yeah. Morphism means forms. Morphism means? Forms. Like forms. a okay. single function can have various forms, okay. various characteristics. Okay. okay. A very simple example. Uh, you do uh, promote an employee. Okay. You okay. do, uh, there is an employee object, ABC, ABC dot promote. Okay. okay. Now that promote can mean different thing. For an employee of, uh, say, CEO level and an employee of engineer level, right? The uh, increase in the percentage and Definitely everything will, it will vary, right? Mm. So, is the same function name, just the employee type is different. So, different things will happen inside the function, right? Okay. Let me give you one more example. Like, there are different, uh, so basically, the same function, but because the characteristic of the objects that you are passing is changing, it's different yeah what will happen inside the function will also differ that will be predefined uh, right. the programmers will take care of it yes okay. yes so for example uh, there's a function called take sum of numbers okay if you pass two numbers it's going to take some like uh, a plus b but if you pass three numbers it yeah. will automatically take care of a plus b plus c yeah all understood. you have to say is sum and then you can pass A, B or A, B, C. Okay, understood. Depending on that, yeah. the numbers will get called. Right? So, this is called polymorphism. Polymorphism. Again, so this also helps that you just, have, you just care about employee. So, suppose tomorrow if I have to promote all the thousand employees, right? I can just write like a for loop that, okay. Understood. There will be variants inside. But uh, the basic, uh, whatever you call, you call software or the program will be same. Hmm. Right, exactly. So, 
uh, depending on which function gets called only mm, the variable part will have to be rewritten even that no not rewritten see for example i write a for loop i say i have a list of employees promote all of these employees now the function will see that okay this is th the type of the employee so i have to uh, promote it in this way okay okay understood understood right yeah yeah so these are the four major concepts so uh, we have these are concepts of object oriented programming, programming right okay. this is how we really write code good right so uh, did you understand them clearly so far yes so, so actually this is all i wanted to explain but maybe i may not be able to code it but yes i could understand what you explained yes so now the, like this is the basics this is what we ask in interviews after this comes low level design okay, okay. so this is to show that people of literally any level can understand the basics of programming right so initially i i have we have done a video where i tell you how do we write code right yeah, like yeah. very simple function now the second thing that we did okay the complex things the, i taught you dy dynamic programming right that is that is again a thing that people are very scared of that how do we can you know write such i remember that topics. yeah yes. yeah yeah now this is something that i want to say that this is the regular programming that we do this is like basic concept we have understood just by sitting and talking for 10 15 minutes now all you have to do is like really implement it in code of course maybe some coding language uh, coding uh, now what do you call language maybe experience may be required for doing that but if you say concept wise yes i have understood <laughs> I don't have the language skills mm -hmm. in the uh, languages you write, you people write, mm -hmm. whatever languages you are using. Don't those skills do, I don't have. But yes, basic concepts I have understood. Yes, so that is what we expect from uh, you know freshers or something. Like when people start working, this is what we expect that you ask as many questions as you can. That why are we writing this sort of code? Okay, good. How can we maintain it? How can we really you know reuse the code? So what was the purpose of this interaction? To show that if you can understand. literally anyone can do it like you, you know you are a retired person like you have retired from your job since 2 years i am retired but not tired <laughs> yeah. too many thoughts on my mind i can't sleep at night so i just keep writing right but uh, yeah you, you know if you can understand with literally no prior experience in coding yes all you have to do is like literally make some effort to understand the basics and from there like you know take code yeah, it was simple logic nothing no, no rocket science yeah right exactly coding is simple logic there is no rocket science anyone can do it great good i hope you had fun in the video definitely so any, anything you would like to say uh, basically kirti coding has changed the entire world now so definitely people need to learn more and more skills and take up more and more coding like uh, uh, especially this uh, covid era had uh, taught so many things to so many people we were not aware of online classes uh, and uh, zoom or microsoft teams and so many other platforms so many some people would have developed these platforms and uh, thanks right. to the people who have been doing this coding who would have foreseen this and, and we could use them so definitely uh, i do not know the actual applications but yes uh, it can work wonders great thank you so much for coming and being such a sport it's always my pleasure thank you kirti bye bye I really hope you like the video. Let us know in the comments if you would like to watch more such similar videos where I explain concepts to my father. I think it is sort of fun. Do let me know in the comments and please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. It will mean a lot to me. Thank you. Yeah.